um, yeah, hope you're all well. Uh, as you guys know, um, this is going to be recorded. So if you would like to share after, feel free to uh, use our YouTube link, uh, share that with people who you think would be interested in the talks. Um, yeah, it's, it's good to see such a good turnout again. Um, yeah, good number of people that we've had joining for the last few talks. It's good to see sort of some of the same names showing up each week now. Um, but yeah, it's really good to see so many people obviously taking the time out and uh, yeah, attending. Um, as you guys know, apart from sort of events, uh, you know, I, I'm in Oliver Bernard, that's a recruitment company. If anyone is obviously looking for new roles or hiring, things like that, feel free to obviously reach out to my email over Meetup, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Um, yeah, be, be keen to have a chat with you guys if you've got any questions. Um, I think apart from that, obviously, thanks to Camille, Camille for taking the time out today. Um, I'll pass you over to him now, um, who's going to be talking about what developers get from the design process. Um, same as normal format, guys. Questions we'll do right at the end using the chat box. Um, so we'll go all the way through the presentation, then we'll use the questions. But um, yeah, over to you, Camille. So hello to all, all of you. Uh, I hope you stay safe and in good health in these uh, specific times. Uh, one, one thing, uh, because I had a problem with uh, Zoom at the beginning, so if you have a Mac or something, just install the new version if you have a problem to connect. Uh, so please uh, let me share the screen. Uh, yeah. Okay, I hope you can see the screen. Uh, I'll open the chat window also if you have any, any issues. Yes, all good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I will start with introducing myself. Uh, my name is Kamil Schwaba. I'm from Poland. And I am an iOS developer with more than nine years of experience uh, in uh, mobile development. And currently also I'm, uh, I am a mobile team leader. And uh, lately I've been working a lot uh, around uh, uh, offerings, around design and mobile in, in my company, in PGS. Uh, so that, that's why one of the things, uh, one of the reasons why I'm, I like this topic, uh, which we will discuss today. Uh, so the topic, uh, mobile dev and design. So I, I would like to share my view of mobile project uh, with strong uh, design influence on it. Uh, and uh, first of all, I would like to start to say what uh, is design uh, when I'm talking about it. Uh, or I will start what this is not actually. So design is not only um, UI designs, graphics or pretty pictures. Of course, this is important thing. Also, it's not just uh, wireframes from UX designer. It's much more because it's like a process, a tool, a way uh, to approach the problem to the, the new solution, uh, to build a new solution, actually, new product. Um, uh, there are many tools within design. For example, uh, design thinking, design sprint, and, and much more. Um, but I have to say, uh, I'm not expert on, in that tools, so uh, I won't be able to answer very precise questions about them. So I'm just telling here a story about how we, I use, uh, or we use actually, uh, some part of those tools, those design processes uh, in our projects or in my recent projects in the company. Uh, so let's, let's begin. Uh, so the agenda, agenda is actually basically uh, steps within the projects. Um, uh, all starts with uh, entry phase, which you can call also elaboration, if you want. Uh, and next step is the prototyping. I will dip into it later on. Sorry, later on. Uh, next is, of course, delivery. And uh, within delivery is also the important point, point of analytics. I have gave it uh, another like section of this presentation because it's not another step in the process, but it's a very important part of it. So that's why there is an, like another section in this presentation for analytics. Uh, and at the end of the iteration, there is a, a feedback uh, when the iteration ends and the new loop starts. So entry phase, uh, sometimes called elaboration with ideation phase and so on and so on, different uh, definitions from design uh, world. Um, so the main question on this part is, uh, checking if we are solving the right problem. This is not something I have uh, came up with, actually. Uh, this is uh, the main thing uh, w w when you are reading about or you would like to read about design thinking. So checking if you are uh, solving the right problem, user problem, of course. Uh, 
<clears throat> so when thinking about uh, the elaboration, it's about uh, starting the project to understand it, to understand the problem, the user. And uh, usually it starts with uh, some research. Uh, for example, competition research, usually it's uh, done by a team of UX and BA, so business analy analytics and user experience designers. They, they research the current uh, products and solutions uh, to get best of it and, um, and better. Of course, there are all sometimes uh, user interviews. So if uh, our client actually, uh, or if you are building your own product, your maybe current clients, uh, or you have already users, you can talk with them uh, to check what they expect. Or uh, there are actually uh, like uh, tools where you can invite uh, random people uh, from the world uh, to, to join the interviews and check uh, what they expect from the specific group of people you will target. And then usually there is a workshop uh, where there is, uh, on the workshop uh, they, there is, uh, different skills, skill sets uh, from people like BA, uh, UX designer, UI designer, and of course there should be a mobile expert, uh, so engineer, and uh, product owner, stakeholders, and business uh, part of the project, uh, where uh, on the workshop we, we do uh, um, exercises from the design and uh, stuff like personas and uh, and we are getting to to know the business goals because that's that's very important and we describe the user journey the main functionalities um, usually it's not possible to define the whole backlog on the workshop and we are just defining the main functionalities um, maybe some ideas for the future but this is not the point to describe uh, here the exact detailed backlog uh, but uh, for example, uh, on this on this uh, phase, you should have described uh, what should go for the prototyping next phase, and actually what you are expect from the MVP, so the first uh, iteration of the product building. Uh, why you need, for example, personas, and what what's that uh, as an example of uh, design uh, exercises and tools. Uh, so personas is when you describe your user, but with very, very detailed way. I mean, uh, you should even give uh, him or her a name, a picture, and describe his uh, environment and, and background and so on and so on, because all of that can actually um, involve, uh, influence uh, the project, the way the, the UI is, will be looking, the UX is working, and, and so on and so on. Uh, from the from the artifacts after workshops, uh, we usually do a wireframing uh, done by UX, UX designers. So the user journey is actually uh, uh, shaped in the wireframes, and of course, as I said, the business goals, which is uh, very important. Uh, with all this business, uh, with all this design process, the user-centric appro approach is the main thing uh, when you think about design. And but you have to always have business goals on mind when doing uh, the project, so that that's how it should work. And during this presentation, um, in all of these phases, I would like to show you what actually developers. So we, I am a developer also, get from the design part of the project. Uh, so uh, design process, and also what we should give to make it work. Uh, so developer point of view, actually. Uh, so what developers get after this first phase? Uh, business and user overview. Uh, this is very important uh, using design process and currently working with, with clients that all team understands uh, business view and user view. So they can always uh, join the discussion, uh, the conceptual phase and, uh, and discussions to get with new ideas and always understand uh, what they've been linking for whom. Project scope, of course, that's important for, uh, for, for us. And uh, inputs for technology selection. This is actually a very deep and a topic. Uh, I don't want to go very, uh, very wide on it uh, today. If, if someone would like to discuss it, I'm happy to do that. I love that topic, uh, but not today. It's, it might take a few hours, I think, sometimes. Um, 
Yeah, but uh, for example, when you are uh, describing a business point of view on this workshop, the first phase, the budgeting, uh, the time framing, it might affect what technology, mobile technology you choose. I mean, here, uh, I know there are different kind of uh, um, naming for different technologies now uh, in the internet and, and uh, uh, articles, but let's say hybrid or uh, for example, uh, cross-platform native or pure native and stuff like that. Of course, you get also the infrastructure, the basic infrastructure, I mean technical part. So what will be the backend, who will be uh, providing it and so on and so on. And uh, what you have to give to, to make it work. So you can give and you should ideas from your point of view. Uh, during the workshop, you have... Uh, you know, you're, you're uh, engineering and knowledge about uh, the mobile platforms and you can give an ideas about new uh, tools, new technologies we can use to solve some problems even better. Uh, technology recommendation, of course, this is, um, this is related to the previous uh, uh, topic I, I've mentioned about choosing technology. Uh, expertise, where what is possible. Uh, I mean, sometimes, of course, uh, not technical guys can go further and further with the ideas and we are there to you know uh, to rationalize, rationalize it with engineering so what's possible or we can say okay that's that can be done because usually everything can be done but uh, it's very expensive and long time to to develop so uh, with business part with budgeting and time frames on mind we can suggest maybe uh, easier cheaper solution and we are taking part of prioritization of the backlog because this is also important uh, because uh, we can say that this part of the application can work uh, without any other parts and that will be fine. Sometimes there are connections and we can tell that and, and make part of the prioritization of the backlog. Okay, um, yeah, prototyping. So prototyping, is, uh, you all heard about prototypes. So it's a very fast so way to test your ideas. So on this step, you make a quick prototyping, uh, check it with uh, product owner, users, gather any feedback you can, and decide if it's the way to go or you should go back to the first phase. Uh, basically, in using design, uh, it's important to release something as soon as possible. So test fast and as often as possible. This way, you know that uh, maybe in smaller chunks, so this way you know that you are going in the good direction direction because you are get, gathering a lot of feedback on every step so that's why prototyping is very important um, so in the prototype you can implement uh, or show uh, most important path for the from the user journey some ideas of ui design uh, or sometimes even some designs ready ui designs uh, of course there is mock data and sh it should be clickable as uh, as close feeling to the real uh, application as, as possible, but with uh, time frame on mind. So usually, uh, usually uh, we are doing it. Uh, our UI designers doing it with uh, just screens designed with uh, clickable tools, like for example in Visual. Uh, so without coding, uh, yeah. But that's that's that there is many ways to do it. So what do you get from it? Uh, some examples, uh, you get a general look and feel, you and all the interests, interested people here, so stakeholders, product owner, and all of the, par uh, all, uh, of the team members. Main team, uh, so the, you should get here the idea how the, we should approach the UI and uh, yeah, user feeling. And of course, first feedback. And this is the way you can check if you are going the, the, the right direction. So what developers get from it? better scope for definition of for estimations so uh, of course you know that estimating is hard job and estimations that the right estimations for the before delivering before delivery but before building it should be done after this phase uh, because uh, then you get an idea how the for example the ui will look like and as you already know the ui is a big part of estimation for mobile projects so that's why uh, you you get it uh, here with a with a you know good detailed way, not just description from from a UI designer. Of course, general look and uh, feeling of the solution. 
it might be important for developers so then can, they can already feel what they will be building uh, next next on the next step and what they can get get uh, sorry give um, yeah when when the prototype should be actually a coded solution coded uh, application uh, because maybe you can then start to uh, work on that when you're building the right application and uh, then of course we need to build it and first estimate it build it and mock the data and do all the you know development job here next phase is a delivery so um, basically most important for us uh, the most job is done here by us uh, and the approach is big team working with user centric uh, in, in the mind always this, those are the points uh, I've mentioned here uh, that are crucial that this, this design is still working. The design process is still working during the, the delivery. Uh, for example, uh, you, uh, seventh point is uh, UI, UX and BA contributing, uh, specialists contributing, uh, because it's, it's quite common that after uh, the first phases, uh, those specialities are gone and and uh, we are not getting any support from them or you are the, in the position when uh, you are getting the design ui designs and user uh, and wireframes from the third party agency for example uh, and then it might be hard to not get any feedback from them and support so of course agile team uh, this is a common thing but it's also important for uh, design because for example uh, design thinking is working quite well with with scrum uh, because they are like on the same level uh, to making the process of uh, building the application work. Uh, sprint goals, yeah, it's it should be a thing that all Scrum teams have, but uh, from my experience, it's not. So I know it's very important to have sprint goals defined for every sprint, and you have to uh, you can imagine that every daily meeting is much better with sprint goals defined uh, because you know what you are talking about all the time and and what uh, for example project manager or all of the team expecting from you to hear because you always have to you know get an idea if you are reaching the goal for the sprint of course application development and testing uh, and here on in this presentation i when i'm talking about developers uh, usually on also having on mind at the qa team uh, scrum ceremonies, so uh, yeah, you should use refinements and uh, review, retro, demo, demo uh, in, during the review. This is all important uh, to make it work. And conceptual work, so discussing with all the members what can be done better, what idea we have to make it done better for users. Uh, and, uh, sorry, the zoom window is... Okay, uh, it's hiding me, the, the presentation. Uh, and regular releases. As I mentioned, uh, the fast releasing is very important in design. And during the dev delivery, it's also important. So you have to deliver uh, as soon as often as possible and as quick as possible. Sometimes it actually means you have to think about uh, technical depth and you can actually handle it. Uh, so, uh, but of course, the best way is just use you just doing the smaller chunks of the work and of the functionality and adding more and more with next iterations but you don't you shouldn't build a whole big solution and after months of development just release it to you know to even to beta testers or or users you should test and get feedback as often as possible mm -hmm. sorry so what do you get? Released application and backlog defined. So with all of that uh, actually working uh, during delivery, the backlog is actually uh, defi defined with more details during develop the development delivery. And uh, when you have a BA and UX specialists on board, they can discuss with product owner a lot uh, how, to, how it should work and you know, make better, uh, better uh, description of the stories. And this way, the backlog is becoming uh, actually a documentation of the work of the project. And it's important when you're getting a new team members or handing the, uh, the project to the new team. Of course, you are getting the user paths. So basic uh, overview of the whole project, uh, planned scope. And uh, you should have a good 
uh, stored uh, graphic designs. I mean, there should be stored in a way that they can be reused. And that's, that's, the, that's the good way to go. Uh, you can, for example, use design systems, but uh, yeah, this is a whole new topic, big topic uh, for another time. So what do you get uh, from, I, I, I mentioned it, uh, from design part of the delivery? You have a gra graphic designs with assets and definitions. So yeah, you can also get that from the first phases, but here you can actually get new ones when you need it. So uh, for example, uh, iPhone SE, the old one, sometimes happened when you tested it at, the la at last, not a good idea. It's become that uh, the, the view is not looking very well on the, the, there. So you can still, uh, you know, get in touch with uh, UX and UI designer and decide what to do with it. That's why having them on board is very important. Of course, you can also uh, verify your uh, your story you have finished or functionality. You can just have a quick chat with uh, with all team and then discuss if it, if it's the way to go and it's done properly. Um, yeah, and always visibility into business goals. That's important. So we are know, know what what we are getting at. And stories clar clarification. Yeah, I, I love to work with PAs. Uh, to they they can do the hard job to you know discuss hours with with product owners, and we just get in the, at the essence of the business view and the user view, of course. Uh, so it, w w how you contribute to that? Uh, you can always get the uh, give the ideas. Uh, of course, always estimations. Uh, estimations are important not just you know to know uh, to get the uh, client know how it costs it will be how costly it would be but also uh, to prioritizing the backlog and uh, of course development work and uh, sometimes you have to discuss with the UI designer how uh, they should give you the assets for the graphic designs I mean the format and, and uh, maybe any tool uh, to use and uh, regular releases of course because that's our job to do Analytics, as I mentioned, this is a part of delivery, uh, but collecting data can speed up this access. Uh, sometimes uh, clients, our clients, my clients, uh, when I worked in other companies, say that, uh, no, I, we don't want analytics, it's too expensive, we don't need it now. It's actually changing right now, um, because most of them understand how, how and why it's uh, needed. Uh, sorry for the interruption. Okay. Hope it's good now. Um, okay, so usually you can use the already built tool to integrate within your project like uh, Firebase or, or the old uh, Google Analytics it was called, or you can build all your own tools, but you have to remember that there should be, of course, events, like simple events like uh, clicks, taps, uh, getting to the screen and so on but there should be also goals, well-defined. Uh, and this is usually skipped because uh, when I mean goals, it's like business goals so or user goals. When you describe actually when uh, the, the path user should go to get to the goal and, and uh, then you are actually logging that, uh, actually the user went with the, this specific path. And this way you will have much faster uh, results, results, and easier to read uh, what you are expecting. And of course, you are getting the user profile and devices. So we are when we are building your own uh, analytics tool, remember to uh, lock anything you can, and user user actually allowed about user and device they use. Uh, what you get: user, business, and device stats and in basic words. So any data about the solution uh, you need. Any, any, any way, any view of it. So what developers get from it? Uh, information about errors. It's not only just, just crashes, which you can get, uh, for example, from, uh, uh, from uh, App Store, but also you can uh, integrate uh, the way to report errors by users. And of course you get devices and system version stats. So this way you can, for example, talk with, uh, with clients to discuss if we should ditch any device or iOS or system version. Uh, this is important for many reasons. Of course, user count. Uh, maybe this is more, more important for backend developers, but uh, currently and in near future, uh, when there will be lots of 
multi or mobile edge computing. Uh, it also might be important for us for mobile developers. And uh, what you should give? Uh, of course, we are integrating the tools and we are actually coding the logging of events, goals, and so on. Feedback, the last and not least phase, which is actually the end of the iteration and start for the next one. So you gather user comments, uh, analytics data together, ratings from stores, error counts, and anything you can get from the uh, released solution. I mean, really, when I'm talking about releasing solution, I mean also beta testing, any kind of handing the application to wider audience. Uh, so here you can gather any, feed, any information you get from, uh, from how the application was used and if it's used well. So artif artifacts are actually simple. So what was done right, what's wrong, what's the most important, and what can be actually re be removed, ditched from the application because it's not used at all. Or maybe from the feedback you can get that it's, it should be there, but it's not understood well. And we had lately this situation in, the, in our application uh, after feedback, and we just make a few simple small tweaks and it, it get to work and the user understand, actually now understand the solution. So what developers get here? Um, the enhancements, this, this description. So actually the next scope for the next uh, iteration, uh, even better understanding, understanding of the users and motivations and greetings, that's important. Uh, so um, hopefully, but when you're using the well, this whole process and gathering uh, lots of feedback in, in, in the way, uh, I think you usually you will get some good, good uh, reviews. And that's always important to get a boost for the next iteration. And uh, yeah, what you should get. Uh, actually, uh, same uh, as the first phase. So uh, you can have, get uh, ideas, uh, estimations, and so on. And of course, here you can decide that, okay, it's, we are going so well, and it's in the very mature uh, phase. Now we can plan to, for example, lower the technical depth. So yeah, that's that's the uh, our job to raise the flag and oh, okay, okay. Now now we need to get up with go get up with the technical parts of, of the application and coding. Uh, yeah, so that's the feedback part. After that, you should go to the uh, first phases and start again. So summing it up, design puts developers closer to the users. Actually, the whole team closer to the users. But here, I just want to mention developers. This is important that we understand the users. And this way we can always uh, catch something during the way, uh, which can be done better uh, for the users. And this way we can uh, release better application. And I think that would be it from me now. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And please uh, write any, any questions you have now. Cheers, Camille. Yeah, I think they've write some questions now. So if anyone does have any questions, uh, if you want to put that in the chat box for Camille, I'm sure we'll be happy to answer them. Okay, there is a question. What is changing when the web client design is factored in? Uh, this is a question uh, within, the, uh, within the section about choosing the technology, maybe. And th this is the one thing. So you can choose another technology, maybe, uh, but not always. Depends uh, what's what's needed there, for example. And uh, actually, uh, when you're talking about the process, the, the project, uh, actually, usually I think about uh, front-end developers the same as mobile developers. We are all front-end developers, so it's all the same way, uh, if, it, if that's good enough for you. Okay, we'll give it another second just to see if anyone else has anything. Um, if anyone does have any questions for Camille, feel free to put that in the chat box. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll give it a minute, Camille, and see, see if anyone else sort of puts through. Um, there you go. Okay, what do you use in analytics tools? Lately, we were using uh, Firebase uh, with those analysts. Uh, it was uh, earlier the Google Analytics. And also, a few times, we have built our own tool. So, uh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes backend developers are building actually an API for gathering data. This way, we can, uh, you know, uh, yeah, make it adjusted to our to our uh, our uh, needs. Yeah. 
Thanks. Yeah, Scrum ceremonies. Project kickoff is, I would say, it's, uh, it might be a part of the Scrum. I'm not a Scrum expert, but I have big experience, let's say, and some training. Uh, uh, scrum ceremonies, I mean all the meetings. Uh, I mean daily uh, refinements, planning, uh, review, retro, and anything in the way which needed. <laughs> but the basics, basics I just I just described. And I have I have I've been in many projects when some of them were were skipped off, and that was not a good idea. Another question: What if the client is requesting a huge future feature? Sorry that is key for the project and it's too big for the sprint. <laughs> yeah. First of all, you have to uh, try to, uh, you know, to uh, make it in the small, smaller chunks if it's possible. So cut it, cut it uh, for chunks and try to, uh, try to uh, convince your clients to, to make it this way because yeah, that's the way to go. Um, and usually it's possible. Because uh, in the Scrum, uh, in the Scrum definition, there is when the story is longer than a day, in eight hours of work, then it's too long, just too long, and always there is a way to uh, to uh, cut it. And uh, of course, there is a part of it where you mean that we cannot release the whole functionality after one sprint. Yeah, of course, but we can release part of it, get, gather a feedback, and then go on. Uh, another question: Have you ever? considered the need for building out a repository of a common UI elements that appear in the design across different projects. Yes, that's called design system, actually. And that's a very good, uh, good way to go. And when you have a, a client or company where you have lots of, uh, lots of projects, like for example, you are a big insurance company and you have like seven or 11 applications in the store, it's a good way to go with the, let's say, uh, uh, ready to use UI components uh, library, uh, but it should always have a description how to use them and like uh, what's uh, do's and don'ts and so, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, what quality level is expected from the MVP product? Yeah, uh, you remember, you have to remember that uh, there are a few things to go. Uh, you can always, you can only done one um, once the first impression, yeah, let's say. So it should be a good quality. Uh, so it should be well tested. So if there is a short time frame, you should make it, uh, you should uh, take smaller number of functionalities. So, so it should work, work well to, to uh, you know, do the first uh, impression very well. So another question is, what are the artifacts that you get from design? Color palettes, full design, measures? Yeah, uh, you are mentioning now actually the UI design, yeah? As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, when I'm talking about design, it's actually much more, it's like a process of a way to go with the project, with product, with the user-centric approach. And uh, when, when we are talking about artifacts from the UR designer, I mean uh, here, uh, um, for example, I have been using uh, in one project, if you are not using design system, we, are, we can use uh, like something like Zeppelin, for example, tool, where you have defined all colors, all palettes, like you said, and screens and stuff like that. And uh, it, there should be, and you should mention it to your, uh, to your, uh, you know, UI designers, there should be designs already done for uh, wired, uh, you know, different kind of screens, and this is usually a problem. Okay, Ch cheers, Camille. I think that looks like uh, it it's it for the questions. Obviously, th thanks again for taking the, the time out today to give this presentation. Um, yeah, look, thanks, thanks to Camille. Um, thanks for everyone who attended. Um, obviously, all stay safe. Um, if anyone else does have any topics they'd like to share, obviously, feel free to reach out. But um, yeah, thanks again, Camille. And I uh, look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you. See you soon. Stay See you, safe. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah.